Let's have a talk about this Ebola situation. You see the fear peddlers, the fear porners on YouTube jumping on a bandwagon. They all want to make their little Ebola videos and pump out the fear. Well, it's nothing to sneeze about. And it will kill you. It has overseas. But what are we looking at here is the latest article placed up about the uh, antidote, the supposed cure serum. What I want you to notice in the picture that you may have already spotted is they're carrying the dead Ebola victim out, and these guys are all protected, wearing their suits and their masks and their goggles and their gloves and all that stuff. This one here, check her out. She's trailing them, and she's following them. See, she's pumping something onto the ground wherever they walk. But she doesn't have long sleeves on. She doesn't have any eye protection. She has no mask. You can see a dude behind her, and there's someone. And it doesn't look like that guy's protected either, nor these people around in this area here. So... If it's so, you know, you're getting these uh, ideas that it's possibly airborne. Well, what I can say is this picture they're showing you, if it's possibly airborne, then this one here is not protected against anything airborne. So the scope of this article says they are targeting September for the start of clinical trials first here in the United States and certainly in African countries since that where we have the cases at. And that is from the World Health Organization's Head of Vaccines and Immunization. So what we want to start asking questions about is the things that you're not hearing them talk about in the media. Number of the questions that I have that I haven't got sufficient answers to are, are this. We have all those deaths in the African countries, correct? And we have the doctor and the nurse that had been flown back to the United States and hospitalized here for further treatment and observation. And we have been told that the doctor and the nurse were given the experimental drug down there prior to their being shipped back here. And that is part of the reason they seem to both be improving from what they're reporting is because the analysis that they had it and the dosage of this supposed cure drug in the early onset. So my question is, and it should be yours also, why is the doctor and the nurse given this experimental drug that they had access to that nobody else was getting and then the doctor and the nurse gets exposed and they're allowed to be given this drug? But the people in the African countries that are dead from it didn't get it. The people that currently have Ebola that are dying from it aren't getting it. But yet this article says the first clinical trials will be in the United States. The first ones. So since they are testing, uh, testing it on animals, as it says here, promising results on monkeys, Are we led to believe that the clinical trials will be done only on animals, such as the monkeys? Or are they saying something other in this article? And who would the first people, first human people, to go through clinical trials? If the doctor and the nurse have already had it, Who's the rest of the people that's going to go through the clinical trials? 
obviously, when they say certainly in African countries, that would be sure to mean the people that is, that is coming down with it, they're going to give it to them, and those are going to be their, their test subjects. And it also says he's optimistic about making it commercially available, and they think in, in next month, in September, we could already have the results by the end of the year. That means by December. That's pretty quick. So, <clears throat> you know, the Fear Peddlers is talking about, well, it's a man-made virus. Well, you're right. Duh. And with any man-made virus, when you make a virus, at the same time you make something to kill somebody, make them sick, you're making the antidote for it. So when they're talking about clinical trials, what are they really talking about? Because they've already got the antidote for it if they made the, the uh, virus in the first place. And then the fear porn mongers have finally done a little research and said, hey, you know what? They got a patent on that thing. Well, you know why the fear mongers are just now finding out that they got a patent? Because they never bothered themselves to find anything out about Ebola until now. Or they would have known that it's been a few years that they've had the patent. So there's a lot of copy and pasters out there. And there's a lot of fear porn going. And I believe that's what they want you to do. They want us to be afraid. They want us to be paranoid of it. You get it? So this drug that is supposed to cure it. How do you know what it'll actually do once you take it? Is there a little something extra inside of it that you're not going to know about? And maybe that's the purpose, the fear you into taking it to protect yourself against Ebola. And you actually take a little something else that you don't know about going to do a little something different to you that you're not told about? These are the questions you should be asking. You should be wanting answers. You can never get answers if you never ask questions. And if you don't ask the right questions, you're never going to get the right answers. Just remember, this setup here the African nations are always seem to be a testing ground. You notice that? That's normally where they dump the trial of these viruses on their populations. So this setup could be for something that's coming later. But I don't believe that you're gonna that you're gonna see Ebola running rampant over the United States. Not at this time. I believe they're setting a gauge. They're seeing, the, they're seeing the public reaction is what they're doing. They're seeing whether you're getting scared and crap in your pants or not. They're seeing whether you're screaming for them to do something, screaming for protection. They're seeing if you take it hook, line, and sinker. Because that's, that's the catch for me. Why has the doctor and the nurse got a treatment, but the people dying from the stuff haven't got access to it yet? And that's another part of the, of the scenario. You need to, we need to flip the coin over and say, do the doctor and the nurse actually really have it? There's a possibility maybe the doctor and the nurse don't even have it at all. And maybe that's why they let them come back. Because if they never had it at all, there's no danger that they're carrying it back into the country. You see? Everybody gets all bent out of shape and stuff about, well, these two people are bringing Ebola over here. Well, if you think they had it 
and they brought them back over here, then it's going to be a natural knee-jerk reaction for you to say, I should have never brought them over here. Spreading that stuff around. We never had Ebola in, in the U.S. before this. But it is possible they don't have it. They just said they did. To make you think there's a possibility of a pandemic over here. That way the fear keeps going. So you got to ask questions and you got to use, to coin a phrase from Spock, logic dictates. You got to think about things. The place we know that it is active at is in the African countries. Look up all the different types of, of nasty uh, viruses that have gone on down there, and you'll be able to get a bigger picture that that is the, the area that it seems that they have decided to use, in my humble opinion, as a testing ground for these nasty new little laboratory made things to see just how good they are because there there are uh, different people that have said a whole lot of different things you know prince philip said if he ever died and came back he'd like to come back as a virus you know a real nasty kind of a virus and, and wipe it and be able to Get 95 of the people, 95 percent of the people sick, and and kill them. So you've got uh, the queen's husband who, you know, said if he had his reincarnation wish, he'd like to come back as something that would kill 95 percent of the population. So these are twisted, psychopathic, uh, probably non-human people. You don't say things like that if you, if you're if you're a human being. So you would have to be a, a a vessel of evil. You would have to be a vessel that looked like us, but be truly evil inside. You get it? You've got others that said population control. You know, we need to crack down on 98% of the population and get them gone. You got the Georgia Guidestones that somebody made about keeping the population way, way low. They have these. These, these ideas, these genocidal ideas. And it's all about timing. When are we going to do it? What are we going to do it with? And exactly which parts of the population are we going to segregate out for the survival of? And I don't believe it's time over here that you're going to see a pandemic. I'm sure you have thoughts of your own. Trust in the Lord. He says not to be afraid. Because even if you lose your life, what else has He already told you? To be absent from your body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of about death. If you've got a clean slate with, with God, and if you know Christ, the only reason you would be afraid is because you know you're going to suffer some punishment whenever you face your judgment. So clean up your act. Trust in Him. Do not be afraid in the face of evil. And God bless everyone out there. And don't let these YouTube fear porn mongers poison your mind. Because if you'll notice, the fear, the fear porn mongers are taking your money. You're making money for them. That's why they do it. 